Hello everybody! So as you can see from the title, um, <clears throat> some life has happened and I needed to have my gallbladder taken out. This surgery was not planned. This was very much an emergency situation and I'm going to tell you all about it, uh, especially some signs and things that was symptoms rather I was experiencing that led me to go to the hospital and then ultimately get the surgery. I am also going to be using the three quarters of this video to be a recovery diary so you can see the past week of what that's like as well as pictures of my stomach and what that is like which is bruising galore um I'm gonna say trigger warning but like it's it's not gr it's not a graphic surgery per se so um the the wounds are not like you know Grey's Anatomy status but um if you want to see more and hear about my experience and see some of the recovery process stay tuned All right, you guys, so I'm Blake, aka Posh Boss Blake, and welcome back to the channel. And today, I'm telling you all about my gallbladder surgery. We're just going to dive right into it, and if you want to subscribe, please do, uh, and also give this video a thumbs up. So, for those of you who've been on the channel for a while, I would say almost a year ago now, I had been, ever since uh, the pandemic started, around that time frame, it just kind of coincided, I've been having back problems that... It was my middle and upper back. I just want to be very clear. And if you're thinking you have gallbladder symptoms, I'm going to just be very specific with my issues. The middle and upper back were my issues. I thought it was muscle spasms. I thought it was chiropractic work that needed to be done. And I did, in fact, go to the chiropractor. But it felt mostly this pain. It was like obviously inside my body, but it was a pain that could not be touched, so to speak. Like, like, oh, my back hurts, someone pushing on it in that area was not helping. Like massaging, rolling it out on a foam roller or a chirp wheel wasn't working. Um, and this was sporadic. It really didn't, looking back, I can see the triggers, but like just living my life, I thought it was, I pulled a muscle or I bent over too much and like strained my back or something because I didn't have stomach pains. So that's very specific. The back pain started, I didn't have stomach pains. To my knowledge, I can't recall a year ago. But what happened three weeks ago, I was in a, uh, four weeks ago now, um, just based on when this video is happening. Um, I was in LA for a work assignment. And on the Saturday of the weekend, I came home in February. I had this spasm but this back spasm feeling this pain was debilitating these pains have been waking me up in the middle of the night and I usually toss and turn do yoga stretch I'm in my bed I'm all over the place for about an hour to three hours okay this would happen sporadically it wasn't consistent it would be like one night here maybe a month later one night there it was crazy but three weeks ago when I was in LA I have experienced pain that kept me up for five hours. I basically didn't sleep that entire night, which was terrible because I had a flight to take the next day. And my travel day was like 24 hours. Anyway, um, so I thought because of my circumstances, I switched beds for where I was staying. So I was like, oh, the bed triggered my back. Normal assumptions. So I get home from LA and the pain continues. I'm back in New York and the pain continues except it's not going away now. And I'm noticing my stomach is starting to become painful as well. So right when I get home from LA that first night, I have pain issues. Okay, notice the stomach, but I don't think anything of it. Maybe I, maybe it was the traveling. Okay, I keep going into the week, like next day, next day, I'm still having these issues. I have one day of relief the entire week. Second week, pain comes back pain in the stomach keeps coming back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not okay. What is happening? And each episode, spasm, I think it's a spasm at the time. I'm like, this is getting longer. Like this is getting longer in the night. It's happening before I even start to go to sleep now. Like it was a very weird circumstance. And keep in mind, this was all happening when I was starting to go to bed or like when I was asleep. I'm And like, you guys, I cannot tell you enough. This pain was debilitating, excruciating. Nothing was happening. No Advil, no arthritis medication. No, nothing was working. Yoga, stretching, uh, machine gu like machine muscle guns. Nothing was working. So um, it had been three weeks of that. And last Tuesday, 
at like 12 a.m. I have these issues. The issues are the worst they've ever been. And I had been up for hours. And my mom saw the light was on in my bedroom and texted me and was like, are you okay? Because she knew I was having these issues. And I said, actually, I don't. I think it's an ER situation. But I was freaking out. Because I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to like be inconvenient. But like, this is, what if this goes away when I get there? Like that kind of thing. Well, honey, we tried a lap in the in the bottom of the floor. We thought maybe it was a back issue and I needed to walk. Not the case. Pain continued to worsen and the stomach pain that coincided with the back pain was terrible. I tried to rock back and forward to like uh, keep myself in somewhat of comfort from the discomfort. It was not helping, but I was trying anything. I was in child's pose. I had all like, I was just in my underwear. I was like, am I hot? Like, is what's happening? I need stretching this side, that side, up, down, on the ground, like every single thing, nothing was helping. And the stomach pain was piercing. It was piercing. And I'm going to step back a little bit. So this is my, my chest, right? My man boobs, if you will, my chest. The pain was in like a T-shape. So across the top and in the center, not too far down, more towards the top, but it was like a T, like a T-shape, right? Only there. So whatever. We go to the emergency room, which fun fact, not so fun fact, when I go to check in, we get told my mom can't come with me. So we hug each other and like, it's a very weird time. I'm in excruciating pain. She's sending her son to the hospital. And it was a very weird moment. We both cried. It was a very weird circumstance. And I ended up being alone for the rest of the surgery experience. And that was not fun. Um, it was very lonely, but I will say all the nurses, I really appreciated some. Bless up to the nurses and the frontline workers. So I go to the hospital, I get checked into the ER. I'm in the ER at 3.30 in the morning, which is just a crazy experience. You're tired, you're in pain, whatever. The doctor sees me, I tell them the circumstances. They order blood work, they order CT scans of my pancreas and my gallbladder. Ultimately, everything shows that I had stones and my gallbladder needed to go. And every time the pains would happen, ultimately, this is what I learned. Every time the pains would happen, it was a stone in movement. And it is very common when you have gallbladder issues that the pain from your stomach or your back radiates, not exactly to one another, but it happens in that general area. And I will preface again, not the lower back. Lower back issues were not connected to this. And I was never having those. It was always middle of my back. I cannot stress that enough. Middle and to the right side, like just off to the right of my spine. Very crazy. So get my TT, CT scans, da 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 da. And then the doctor, the surgeon comes in. And he's like, all right, so you ready to get this taken out? And I was like, <laughs> what? Ended up needing laparoscopic surgery. And as you'll see after in the recovery videos, and I'm going to put some stuff side by side at this point. Um, I ended up having four incisions, three stick incisions and one bigger incision where they took out the actual organ. Woke up from anesthesia. Baby, I was in pain. This pain. Ooh, this is my first surgery. Oh my gosh. No, this pain was like unreal. Um, crazy. Lots of pain medicine. A lot of antibiotics too. Oh, and you know, just for people who are curious, when you get your gallbladder out, which is responsible for your, for some of the body's digestion process of fats and things, uh, your body now has to learn how to process, you know, eating. So um, the doctor was like, don't eat any fatty foods. This can happen. It's it's rare, but it does happen. Um, if you do eat foods that have fat and your body can't figure it out yet, you will throw up or have diarrhea. Thankfully, I've not had that experience yet. Oh my God, thank you. But it was crazy. And um, as you'll see, I had crazy bruising and swelling um, not so much bruising initially, but I had like a baby belly, like you get bloated because of gas and just things and, um, becoming gassy can happen. Not necessarily from what you eat, just from this process, you get gassy and the air needs to work its way out and it takes a while. So I save this all to say, it's going to be like four to eight weeks before I'm back to like good, good, normal. Um, it took me about a week to be able to stand up straight and that might sound weird, but the, where this all happened, it, like I was like hunched over the entire experience healing. Um, 
but we'll talk about more in the recovery process. Let me know if you have questions down below, and I'm so thankful that everything went smoothly. This will be a longer video, but I, you know, I please encourage you to continue watching in the recovery process, because mine is not, it was not a fast recovery process. I, I will talk about that in the recovery videos, but um, I, I, when people reached out and said, oh, I've got this done, I was back to work two days later, honey, that was not my experience, that is not my experience, so everyone's different, everybody's different. Let's get into it. All right, you guys, so here is day two of recovery. I am in my mom's bed. It is easier to get in and out of. That's why I'm in it. Um, and also, I still have some residue on my arm from all the IV stuff. And actually, where is it? On this arm, which I find interesting. This is where they took blood, right? But then also, that vein was connected to one of my stretch mark veins. So, like, you can see it's funky there. But, um, yeah, this bed's just easier to get in and out of. And currently I'm just propped up. The only time I go full horizontal is at bedtime when I'm, like, staying put in that position. Because it's incredibly challenging to get up, period. Um, it's hard to, like, sit up. That's not something I can do on my own without my arms. Um, and I'm trying to do it alone. I'm not asking for help because I need to be self-sufficient with getting up. Um... But it is a process, and I'll start to include some clips of what it's like to get in and out of bed, because it's funny. And, um, yeah, other than that, I'm starting to feel better. The pain meds, I'm still on, and will be for probably, like, maybe one more day, but, um, weaning off of that. Uh, but honestly, the only thing I feel is pressure in my stomach towards the right side. And if you guys want to see my stomach, actually, hold on. Oh, this is such an unflattering angle, but like, you know, this is my life right now. Okay, so this is my belly. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Right? I'm so bruised. Oh my god. And this is, I'm trying to see if this, you can, yeah, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is like, not my normal size of my stomach. It is so swollen. It's like a mountain. Like, it's nuts. It's nuts. Um, It's probably raised like one or two inches from what it normally sits at. I do have a belly, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and when I first got out of surgery, it was like, a, it was a freaking mountain. I was like, what? But yeah, I've got the other incisions. Excuse my stretch marks. But it's also fascinating that all of these are closed with glue, like a medical grade glue, which do survive showers. And it's just fascinating to me. But, um, also, I do have, like, a... Bru I don't know if it's coming off on camera, but I have, like, a bruising on my skin. Like, you can see it here, but it's also this section has, like, a different skin color from the bruising internally. But anyway, yeah, that is... That's where I feel pressure. Not so much pain, especially with the pain meds, but pressure, that's for sure. I don't know if it's gas or something, but yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's something, too. Keeping a crazy hawkeye... Uh, on my diet. Not that I was eating poorly. For those of you who know, I'm on Weight Watchers, doing Weight Watchers, so my eating's been pretty healthy, but something something triggered something in the gallbladder this past week, and it was like, get me out! <laughs> so yeah, I'm just taking it easy. Taking it easy. And I will record throughout the week of recovery. Um... This actually will take probably four to eight weeks internally to, like, get your system together. Can't be in a car. Shouldn't be in a car. Should be driving, especially if you're on the pain meds. Um, particularly because of the internal healing that needs to happen and the pressure that comes from a seatbelt. So, um, not doing any of that. But I will be catching up on a lot of Netflix and YouTube. So, you know, cheers to that. And I'm honestly also happy I had insurance. So yay for insurance. And we'll see you guys mm, day three. All right. Bye. All right, you guys. Day three. You're coming on a lap with me. I do laps in the house because it's cold out. I'm trying to get moving. Also, this is like so not flattering, but this is my life. Um, I just want to say, if you ever have the surgery, I, you like don't eat. I didn't eat for, oh my gosh, almost two days. And just with how everything worked out and timing and whatever. 
But that said, I didn't go to the bathroom for three days after surgery. And part of that process after surgery is actually taking enough medicine so that you go to the bathroom. What I mean by that is I am on pain meds. I am on a antibiotic to kill any germs. But because of that, and because my stomach is relearning how to process foods, I'm also taking probiotics more than normal, like a bigger dose than normal to encourage good gut health and movement down south. Today was the first day that happened, so <clears throat> yay. Also, coughing is hard. Yeah, I cannot believe how much we use our stomachs for everything. Coughing, sitting up, sitting down, like even with the assistance of your arm. It's crazy. Um, what else? I guess I'll show you my belly update. Hold on. Let me pause you. I have to move a little slower these days. Ready? Okay, here's my belly. Also, same clothes. I don't care. Belly. Belly. Here's the belly. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but this whole section has turned purple. Yeah, you can see it here. And that's where, like, it's like weird pressure in this area. It's so interesting. But, you know, here's my other wounds. The big one that makes it look like I have another belly button. Oh, my God. But getting in and out of bed today was a little easier. Um, can't sit on a couch yet. They, they're too they're too low to the, um, to the ground. I don't think I'd be able to get back up yet. And I'm, like, without assistance. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to be independent with that. So, yeah, just doing some more laps. And that was my little check-in for day three. Uh, I appreciate everyone's support. And, you know, continue the recovery. Yeah. All right, you guys. It's day four. Uh, here's how I'm doing. Doing okay. I would say so far, gallbladder surgery, the biggest challenges... And this will probably be until I'm fully healed. We'll just call it dizzy. Um, standing up straight is hard to do because everything was just worked on in your stomach. So like standing up straight and your back is like kind of overcompensating for everything. So that's interesting. Um, getting up and getting down from bed and sitting it's hard. Um, I'd rather stand than try to get onto the couch because it's a little low for my comfort. Um, and then here's my belly update. Okay, ready? Oh, yeah, it's a lot more colorful today. Um, the incisions, I guess maybe they're reducing a little bit, but my whole lower belly is like yellow and blue. Ooh. And I will say today and most days, it's this section that hurts me. And it's still bloated. That'll probably still be there for a while, for a couple weeks, actually. But overall, I'm doing great. Well, as great as can be. Um, thank you to everyone who sent me some beautiful flowers, edible arrangements. It's been very sweet, very kind. Cute little plush toys. It's very much appreciated. Um, but I'm just taking it real easy. Uh, gentle walks around the house. Um, when it's not too cold, which it should be this week, we might have a couple warm days. I'll be able to go around, you know, the block a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Um, I've heard a lot of people share their stories like, oh, I was back to work two days later. I've actually had a lot of those experiences. And for those of you who did that, great. But for what my doctor told me in my experience, there is no return to work for at least 10 days. Um, hopefully I'll be like, functioning normally in my two-week checkup, but um, I actually had a lot of people tell me that they were back to work like the next day. That is so not my experience. I know not everyone has this many incisions either. Um, I guess with this particular laparoscopic surgery, you can have two to four and I had the most. I don't know. It could be because my belly, who knows, but um, I just want to say <laughs> that there's no race to recover here. Ow. Don't laugh. Also laughing. No jokes. I am not on TikTok. I'm not on like any social media because I can't laugh. Hurts. So, um, yeah. And I still, I'm still glued up. I'm still glued up. 
It's like I have another belly button. It's so bizarre. It's so weird. But this is also like hard and anyway. That's my day four update. Stay tuned. Things are on the up. Hi guys, it's day six. I skipped day five. No updates. But I'm out for a walk. It's what, 40s, 50s? Probably high 40s. With my mom. Say hi mom. Oh hi. And the doggy. Uh, feels nice to walk. More than, more than around the uh, dining table. I can stand up straight today. I woke up this morning and I was like, oh my God, I'm standing up straight. I love it. Um, I'll show you my bruising later too, because that has gotten wild on my stomach. <laughs> but yep, that's my little update. Happy day six. So here's an update on my belly. So this is a lot more intense. Um, this is not discoloration from like iodine or anything. Like this is a giant yellow bruise. It goes from the left side of my stomach all the way over here to all the way across my stomach, like even to my side. Oh my God. It is nuts. Oh, sorry. Um, it is nuts. It is firm it's like very hard around these wounds that are starting to heal nicely and then this one it's starting to get itchy in the top of my belly button it's very weird but um yeah this is a very very large bruise that is changing colors daily oh my goodness i can't like it goes to my back like that's nuts all right you guys it's been seven days post-surgery and it is a perfect day out for a beautiful walk Say hi. A little princess doesn't want to walk today. Tiny dog, tiny dog problems. But look, at she's so cute. <laughs> Yay, getting out for a walk. Woo!